All right, this is the lesson for 3.3, .3, the factor theorem. It's on pages 126 to 135 in your text. Our curriculum outcomes are the same as it's been an entire unit. You need to demonstrate understanding of polynomials and polynomial functions of degree greater than two, limited to polynomials of degree that is less than or equal to five, and limited to integral coefficients. Our lesson objectives, we need to learn the connection between the remainder theorem that we took last day and the factor theorem. We need to learn how to use the factor theorem to determine if a binomial is a factor of a given polynomial or not. And we need to continue using synthetic division along with the factor theorem to help factor a polynomial. So something to remember from last day, um, that the remainder theorem stated that the remainder when dividing a polynomial P of X by a binomial X minus A could be found by simply finding P of A. So we were just substituting that number, um, whatever the opposite sign was, or the value you had with the x minus a, we're substituting that into your polynomial. So the factor theorem simply builds on this statement. And the factor theorem says that the binomial x minus a is a factor if p of a equals zero, which just means that you will get a, if you have a remainder that equals zero. That's when we know that a binomial happens to be a factor. So question, is x minus 3 a factor of the polynomial x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6? Well, we need to plug in positive 3, and when we plug positive 3 into this polynomial, if we get a remainder that equals 0, then it is a factor. If we get any number other than 0, it is not a factor. So we're going to find p of negative 3, sorry, p of positive 3. That's going to be 3 cubed plus 2 times 3 squared minus five times three, minus six. Uh, three cubed is 27. We've got two times three squared, which is two times nine, that's 18, minus 15, minus six. I can see right away that 27 and 18 are both bigger than 15 and six, so this thing does not equal zero. So that means x minus three is not a factor. Okay, so here's our big example for this lesson. It says fully factor x to the fourth minus 3x cubed minus 7x squared plus 15x plus 18. That's all the information we have. They haven't given us any other factors that we can divide into that. So we're going to have to go ahead and try and find those factors ourselves. So first thing you need to realize is that because we have a degree of four, our, our largest term is x to the fourth. That means that we could have up to four factors. because each of these factors would have an x, and we have x times x times x times x. So we could have up to four factors. Um, the next thing is we need to be able to start putting some numbers into some synthetic division to help find these factors. Now, you need to take note of this number 18. If these x's, all four of these x's multiply together to give you x to the fourth, then all of these constants are gonna to multiply together to give you 18. So the numbers that you wanna try are all gonna be factors of 18. So we've got positive and negative one. We've got positive and negative 18 because those two things multiply together to give you 18. We've got positive and negative two and positive and negative nine, as well as positive and negative three and positive and negative six. So these are the numbers that we're gonna try in synthetic division to help find out these four factors. Now, hopefully it won't get as far as the, you know, the fourth or fifth number, but sometimes it might. And it's really just a little bit of guess and check, but at least it's intelligent guess and check because we know that they have to multiply together to get 18. So students in, in past classes really like to just use synthetic division for this. One thing that you could also do is start substituting these numbers into this polynomial, finding out if your result is zero, and if that's the case, then you know that it's a factor. But we're gonna start with positive one. Always a good thing to start with positive one and see what happens. So we pull down a one. One times one is one. Negative three plus one is negative two. One times negative two is negative two. Negative seven plus negative two is negative nine. One times negative nine is negative nine. 15 plus negative nine is six. One times six is six. And 18 plus six does not give you zero. So that just means that x minus one 
is not one of our factors. So we just finished saying that uh, x minus 1 is not a factor. So we're going to move on to our next one. So that is going to be if we substitute in a negative 1. So we fill in our synthetic division. And we start performing synthetic division by pulling down the 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Negative 3 plus negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. Negative 7 plus 4 is negative 3. Negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. 15 plus 3 is 18. Negative 1 times 18 is negative 18. 18 plus negative 18 is 0. So what we've done is we've found out one of our four factors. The factor that we found is x plus 1. Well, this here is our quotient. This is what remains after we divide x to the fourth minus 3x cubed minus 7x squared plus 15x plus 18 when we've divided that by x plus 1. So we have 18 as a constant, an x term, an x squared term, and an x cubed term. So we have 1x cubed, we have negative 4x squared, and we have negative 3x, and we have 18. Now we're supposed to fully factor this thing, and by fully factoring it, that means that we now need to factor x cubed minus 4x squared minus 3x plus 18 as well, because we need to find all four factors. So we're at the point where we found our first factor, and we need to find the remaining three factors, so we need to perform synthetic division with the remaining uh, polynomial here. Now we know that one uh, positive one didn't work and negative one did work. And so we're gonna move on to the next logical step which I would say is positive and negative two. So I'm gonna start with negative two because I've already done the question. This will just take less time. Um, we move the one down. Negative two times one is negative two. Negative four plus negative two is negative six. Negative 2 times negative 6 is 12. Negative 3 plus 12 is positive 9. Negative 2 times 9 is negative 18. We add those two things together, we get a 0. So we had an x plus 1, that's one of the factors. We just found out that when we substituted in negative 2 in our synthetic division, we got a 0, which means that x plus 2 is a factor. And we have a polynomial remaining. So we have a constant, an x term, and an x squared. So we get x squared minus 6x plus 9. Now at this point we've got to a quadratic and hopefully we can factor this quadratic by using either inspection or decomposition and not have to use synthetic division anymore. So we're looking for two things that multiply to 9 and add to negative 6 and that would be negative 3 and negative 3. So we have fully factored this polynomial. We've used the concept of or the, the remainder theorem, knowing that if we get a remainder of 0, that it's actually a factor, and that's how the remainder theorem ties into the factor theorem. And then we found all our factors together, and we're able to write this polynomial in factored form. So in summary, the factor theorem builds off of the remainder theorem. The factor theorem says that if the remainder is zero, then the binomial x minus a is a factor of the polynomial p of x. So we're looking for that zero as a remainder, means we're dealing with a factor. And when finding all the factors of a polynomial, the following steps should be followed. So use a constant term to determine which binomials might be a factor of the polynomial. So not necessarily, but they might be. Then we use the remainder theorem to determine which of them are a factor. Remember that if we get um, a zero as a remainder, then it is a factor. If we get any number other than zero, it is not. Then we use synthetic division to determine the polynomial that is left after you divide it by the binomial. And we factor the remaining polynomial by using old methods, decomposition or inspection, or use synthetic division until you get all of your factors. Now, this is uh, really important to be able to understand and be able to do for our next lesson, where we actually have to use this information to start graphing some polynomials, and these factors are super important in that one.
So your assignment, pages 133 to 135. Uh, good luck and see you tomorrow.